Let's look at the jaw. Let's make sure we're also aware of some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using when we look at the jaw. We want to make sure that we're aware of what's called the ramus, the angle, the body of the mandible, and the mandible. We also want to be aware of the mental protuberance. There I go. And that's about it. Now the ramus is going to be this area that of the jaw that is ascending up into the uh, cheek. The body of the jaw of the mandible is going to be the area going towards the mental protuberance. It's going to be the lower part of it. The angle is going to be this portion here. And the angle is, as we mentioned before, one of those things that helps decide or helps to indicate whether somebody is a the skull is male or female. If you go rounder, it's going to be more female. If you come and just say, make this massive protuberance, this massive interruption of that contour, then it's going to be more masculine. Some beautiful women have more masculine jaws. Uh, some men, still very strong looking, will have a more feminine, softer uh, jaw. There's a lot of room for variation, so I don't want to get caught up in anything except for tendencies. So what we're going to do is just keep it a little bit soft. Okay, the mental protuberance, as we said, this is where the mentalis is. It's right there at the chin. That essentially is the chin. Mandible, that's the entire thing. That's what we're going to work on now. So in this case, what we're going to do is extract out this jaw. And the pattern that we're going to take is to make sure that the ramus is indicated. We're going to get the body of the mandible. We're going to get some of the teeth, the lower teeth, along the line of the mandible here, out to the angle, and in. But there's a couple of things I want to also make sure we're aware of. We're going to have our little notch in here for where the the jaw kind of connects with the uh, with the cranial portion of the skull. We're going to call this here the head of the mandible. But we also need to come in and be working on another piece. And this portion here, this is going to be called the coronoid process. So we need to keep that in mind because the shape of our jaw, if we come in and just resketch it, we're going to have the head of the mandible, we're going to have this valley the coronoid process and then our teeth pulled up from there. So that's the general shape of what we're going to extract. I'm going to first make sure that I have the jaw and everything roughly at the angle that I want. So the head of the mandible, coronoid process, and the angle. We're within range. Something we can adjust later as well. I'm going to pull out and in. I'm getting the front part of our mandible here, the horseshoe shape pulling in. I want to just make sure that that's Okay, and now extract, or at least now make the mask. Let's turn shadows off.
or we can start to work with flat uh, whatever we work with let's turn them all back off for a moment we'll just check it okay one question that we can have is how far back are we going to paint for these teeth and I'm just gonna line it up with the cheek right along that line and so that looks pretty solid I'm going to see maybe I need a little bit more for the ramus but I or for the uh, coronoid process but I think that's okay and uh, mesh extraction is not going to behave well with anything masked on the turnaround and we come in set our thickness smoothness all of that stuff extract let's check it not nearly thick enough So I'm going to set that to point 2 and see what happens. Fantastic. Okay, but it is extruding outwards, so in case you're unaware of this, you can go in the negative direction and extract. And then it'll extrude inwards. This has a little bit more problems in some form, some areas, uh, but it looks like we could even go thicker than this and we'll be good to go. So about 0.3. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so we select our face at this point and uh, let's get a little brutal with the form, but whatever you do, make sure you save it or let's just duplicate this so that we've got one that's pretty standard turn that guy off okay and I want to now mask out the portion it's going to represent the maxilla and the cheek yeah there we go we're going to just cut straight across. Yep. Control, click, and drag. Lower our subdivision level. Not too low because you're going to lose form. And uh, we can really aggressively use the trim dynamic brush. You can use clip brushes, uh, any brushes that you really want doesn't matter and it wasn't too hard for us to pull that together we've got some sculpting to kind of make all of this work but everything's progressing pretty uh, straightforwardly I'm just moving that occipital in yeah okay going to now sculpt this teeth the teeth plate here they go back a little further uh, than this okay now, there's a whole lot more going on on the inside of this skull than we're indicating but the most important thing for me is just to make sure that I have created this barrel shape that this is intact and that the cheekbone the zygomatic and the temporalis make sure that these are overlapping and connecting with it and you can see it's a simple integration not too uh, nothing too special right in there but make sure that you have that separate and pulled in so that we have room or a place for us to be thinking about our teeth pull that jaw together I'm gonna control click and drag to clear a mask on that there was one by default there always is when you use mesh extraction and so now I'm solo mode on I want to make some adjustments transparency not transparency but symmetry 
I'm going to just smooth this out. And move elastic. Make sure to turn back face masking on as we sculpt the head of the mandible here. We're going to add enough form to start to create essentially a column or a cylinder I should say. That cylinder is then going to be connecting in with the uh, neck of the mandible which is then connecting down to the angle and uh, all of that stuff. Okay, now we don't want to get too caught up in all the undulations of this but what I do want to point out is that right here we're at the, uh, the coronoid process. Make sure back face masking is on when you do this. We need to make a little bit of extra room in here. Back face uh, or clay buildup might be a better option. But let's see if we can see this in the reference. What we want to be building now, we've got our cor uh, coronoid process here. And see how the where the teeth are, this comes in. There's this form on the inside of the ramus. Remember, this is our ramus here on the outside. So I need to get this form, this heavy plane moving into the, uh, into, on the inside of the ramus. So I'm going to build that with clay buildup. Add some thickness in there. Stroke is lower. It'll be a nicer form. OK, so we've got the teeth coming towards the inside, what's known as the uh, alveolar section, this horseshoe shape. Let's just draw it so that we're crystal clear. The alveolar section right in here. This is where the teeth are coming out of. This is transitioning towards the inside, whereas the ramus is on the outside. And right along here, we have what's known as the oblique line. So this helps us see where we've got a separation in the form. Now, let's just take a look at this from a side view and make sure that that oblique line is indicated. And the oblique line is kind of heading out towards the mental protuberance. I'm going to give this mental protuberance a little bit of a, a shape. and then trim dynamic to just plane it. Make sure back face masking is on for these brushes though. Okay, so there we go. Now this in terms of our jaw we've got the alveolar part which is again the portion along the teeth We have the oblique line. We have our coronoid process, the head of the mandible, neck of the mandible. We have the angle indicated, and the mental protuberance, bottom of the jaw. All the main forms are in place. Just keep this in mind, how the um, al uh, alveolar part is coming in behind the jaw. Just keep that in mind where the teeth are. And also that ultimately this has to be fairly thick in this area of the alveolar part because this is where when you're younger your teeth are actually grown and stored in there. It's kind of amazing to see in images of a six-year-old uh, six-year-old's jaw 
the teeth just residing inside of this section and basically pushing through bone. I um, definitely feel for that experience. And I'm glad I don't remember it. Okay, we've got teeth to do. Teeth are gone, so something's up with this guy. We need to be thinking about where the teeth fit into this, but at this point, we're definitely progressing. Uh, let's check some measurements, make sure our halfway is working. Yeah, halfway's looking okay. And let's check our reference. Let's just go to a side view. Lower our opacity. And we can use this to help judge how well we're doing. Again, we're not doing exactly this particular skull. But I want to adjust things in terms of the orbit of the eye and the nose. All right. So we're off a bit. Let's just get something closer in scale. Let's get height. That's a bit more of a factor. There we go. All right, so you can use this reference and be faithful to it or not. There's a lot of variety that we, we can be indicating here, so I'm not terribly worried about it. But I'm going to just adjust a slight bit. I'm going to make my adjustment in the maxilla portion. I'm going to use the move brush. And just give this a little bit more. space. Okay, and so we've been doing a lot with measurements. Why don't we make sure we have a clear sense of how much the teeth are taking up here. I would estimate to say we're talking about the same distance, one eighth bottom of the nose. If you remember correctly, that was one eighth of the width. We've got one eighth down to the teeth line, the gum line, and we've got a little bit less than one eighth for the teeth themselves. So one eighth, one eighth, one eighth somewhere right around in that area. So I can see the adjustment that I'm going to make now. Get my oblique line. There we go. The tooth is going to come and then straight down. And upwards slightly. And that should give us the room that we need to be placing our teeth. Okay, we've got some room in there for the teeth themselves. So why don't we use our original sculpt to help us get those indicated. And just extract out a ring for the teeth. Okay, so we have placeholders, and now the next thing that I really want to do with these placeholders, before we start with actual teeth, is I want to start to break these up, and I want to understand the dynamics of, of, of really the, the teeth, how the canine forces one change in direction, and the three different types of teeth uh, that we have, stuff like that.